Let's walk through the Winter Ornament Challenge. So first thing you're going to need to do is open up Inventor. Okay, you may not have anything in this area, but if you've, uh, if you've worked with files, you will. Um, and so then you're going to just go ahead and go New. I like to hit the drop down marks and go New Part. And then it's going to take a few seconds to pull up. So then we want that, you start with the th same thing you start with every time you hit the Start 2D Sketch. And then you're going to pick a plane. I am partial to the XY plane, which is the front plane. And then from here, we need to set up our guidelines in order to uh, properly leave ourselves enough space uh, to um, not go over the, the constraints of the project. So we're going to draw a rectangle because this needs to be three inches by three inches. Okay, um, so I'm going to drop that into place. It's a little small, but I'm going to have it blow it up when I put dimensions on it. And then I'm going to hit dimension. I'm going to click the line, drag up, three, enter. All right, and then it's not a square yet, right? It's still a rectangle. I still have one degree of freedom here, All right? I can go dimension and add three there, but that's not really my design intent. My design intent is for this to always be the same length. So I'm going to say equal, and then I'm going to say this is equal to this, and then I get a nice square box. All right, now we need to find the center of this box. So we're going to make a line and go all the way across from corner to corner, and that will... Uh, draw us a, a line through the center and then we're going to hit point all right and then we're going to drag our cursor across this point until it turns green right and that green means you are in the midpoint of that line so i click that so now that is the center of the box all right and then we're going to make a six-sided snowflake um that's not a requirement but that's generally what happens in nature is due to the chemistry of water, it tends to, to go into a six-sided shape. So we're going to do a six-sided um, piece for us today. So that means we're going to 360 divided by 6 is 60 degrees. So we are going to go ahead and set up a 60-degree cone, right, which is the area that we're going to be operating in. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and make a vertical line here. And then I'm going to say I'm going to be 30 degrees from there um, because I want it to be even. Okay. And so these are our, all of our construction lines. And so we need to set them up to be constructions. Notice that they are all black. All right. So they're fully defined. I'm going to click and drag so I cover up all of the items. All right, and then I'm going to hit this button right here, which is construction. All right, and that will turn everything into construction and not use it in your final design. Okay, and so now you have two ways you can take this, right? You can draw your design um, using both of these, and then you'll 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 mirror or you'll circular pattern that six times or you can f only do it in this section mirror it so these two sides will be the same uh, and then do your circular pattern okay so I'm probably going to work I like to do the mirror thing um, because it makes both sides even so I'm going to only draw in this section right notice it gets thinner down here um, and I think I think what I'm going to draw is a tree so we'll do kind of a Christmas tree all right, and so we'll go from here, and this is going to look terrible, but we shall make it work. All right, um, and so then we're going to go to uh, where it connects the line. Now, if we want it to come out very nice and even and straight and match up perfectly, uh, we'll stop when we hit this line, and then we will come in at an angle. All right. Um, and then, so now the point is, is we just need to kind of adjust our tree. I think it makes sense to have this, um, we'll have it extend a little bit so that the trees will touch at that point and that way it'll stiffen it up a little bit. So this is important. As you are doing this design, 
go ahead right and think about how you're manufacturing this on the Glowforge right and what does it mean for the lines that you have put into it okay um, but so could try to anticipate the problems you're going to have right um, and so I think it may be a little weak so I'm going to have this connect there uh, and then this is looking kind of fat here so we're going to come up uh, and make bring that in a little bit and You know, something like that. There's a nice, there's a nice evergreen, right? Happy little tree. And so now that we've got that, we're going to go in and we're going to select all those lines. Okay. And then we're going to mirror them. So if we come up here to the pattern to mirror, right? And it's going to have instructions down here. So it says select geometry mirror. I've already done that. I want to select the mirror line. I want to mirror around that. And then I'm going to hit apply. And then it does the second side there. So there's my tree. Okay. Uh, and that's done, right? Um, notice it didn't give you a preview. Okay. So finish the sketch. Okay, we'll do an extrude. The material that we're using is 0.125. Now, notice when I did this, um, we we automatically um, have a preview here. Okay, if it doesn't automatically preview, you've done one of two things: you've extra got an extra line, right, or you have uh, you know circles within circles. It likes to have a definite inside and a definite outside, right? So if I say at that point, am I inside the thing? Yes. At at this point, am I outside the thing? Yes. Okay. So if you don't get that, there's something with your sketch that's making it not be able to determine inside or outside. Okay, and so then from now here, it's super easy. We do a circular pattern, which is right here. It's going to say select feature to pattern. I'm going to pick this. You can pick it over here. It's much easier over here. And then it's going to it's going to say pick an axis of rotation. I want to rotate around that. I want six of them. And okay. All right. And so now here is my little evergreen uh, tree snowflake doohickey. Okay, um, if you want to go in, right, and make it a little bit more festive, um, you can come on in, you know, you could add some circles to it. If you want to make it look like there's ornaments or whatever else you want to add. Don't know what this is going to look like, but you kind of get the point, right? And then we can finish the sketch, right? We can extrude it. We can say, now it's not going to preview, right? This is what we talked about before. I've got, you know, 10 insides here and one outside. So it's not going to know what to do with it. But I'm going to say, hey, I want to cut, right? And then I'm going to select the things that I want it to cut. And it's going to cut through these. Right, and then I'm cutting one, two, five. The other thing you could do is you could say, you know what, I want to go to a particular surface and I want to make it that surface, right? And then you hit OK, and then you have your cuts through that. All right, same way that you'll make the hole to hang, um, to hang your ornament. And uh, if you want to go ahead and um, extrude that around one of the things you can do is you could drag this up above the circular pattern um, if it's not attached we'll just make another one we'll do a circular pattern here we'll select this right uh, and then now our the line that we use for our axis is missing right uh, however we can go in here into the origin right and we have axes already built up and so since we went from since we went from the original, let me start that again. Um, since we went from the origin, select the feature, which is, don't click that, there we go. Select the feature, axis, Z axis. Oh, we put the origin down here. Uh, cancel. Um, this is a little bit more in depth than I wanted to go, but we can come up here, right? Uh, and all I did was drag that above. Um, and then I'm going to make a 
axis. All right, on a line or edge, and I want to make it right here. That way we don't lose it. Um, and so that's put into place, and then I can drag back down. All right, and so now I have my axis, so I can do the circular pattern of this around this axis, and then that will lay it all in for me. All right, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this and make a drawing out of it, okay? Uh, so what we're going to need to do is first we're going to need to save this. So go File, Save As, right? And then notice where you are saving this. So there if I am in Documents Inventor Activity 234, okay? you I can't help you if you don't know where you have saved it all right and then save it something you know uh, that makes sense we're going to call this happy trees okay something that you can find so there's my happy little trees i'm going to make that invisible not that it matters but i like things to be nice and clean and now i'm going to go file new right and i'm going to say a drawing All right, and then it brings up this giant sheet that's three foot by four foot, a big D size drawing. So right click here, edit sheet. We're gonna change this to A, right? And for the glow forge, we don't need any of this title block. It's all stuff we'd have to delete because we only want the shape. So I'm gonna delete that, right click, delete, right click, delete, make that super clean. All right, now this is not for a drawing. This is just so we're going to the glow forge. We'll hit base, right? And then here is our snowflake, okay? The important part is for you to check and make sure your scale is one to one. We want this to be full size. We want it to be the three inches. So the scale is full one to one. We hit okay. And then there is our snowflake, right? So we're gonna save this. It's gonna default to happy trees in the same spot. Hit save. Right now, it's going to say like, "Hey, you've updated some things. Do you want to save those as well?" Yes, to all. Okay, okay. And so then now everything is saved. And then the last thing we have to do before we can send it to Glowforge is we're going to go File, Export, PDF. Okay. And then from there, we're going to have HappyTrees.pdf. I'm going to take this to my Downloads directory. Okay, because I want to uh, be able to find it later, uh, and not go three directors deep, hit save, all right, and it is going to make that PDF, and this is what the Glowforge is going to read. So there's the PDF, it's all nice and saved, it looks the way we want it to look. We can close that down, all right, and then I'm going to go over to um, our Glowforge app, so if you don't have that yet, um, Miss Yost can take your school email address uh, and send you an email uh, that invites you to the Glowforge app. And that is what we want. And that is there. Okay. Um, and then you will follow that line, make yourself an account, and then you'll hit, uh, you know, create a new part, and then it will bring you to this. Okay, and then from there, all you need to do is hit import artwork, and then you're going to say upload. All right, and then you're going to pick that PDF that you have already selected. It is going to process, do its thing. It takes a little bit. But when it is ready, It will drop your snowflake in. Now, you don't want to grab anything uh, and make it larger or smaller. You want to leave it the size. But if you grab in the middle here, you can move it around. And this is a live camera view, so you can see if people have cut other things out of the material. There's nothing in the machine right now. That's why you don't see anything, right? Move it to the right spot. Go over to Miss Yost and say, hey, I think I've got it set up. What do you think? She'll say, oh, you've forgotten to set your material. And you'll probably, she'll say, hey, go over here and select thick draft board or thick cherry wood or what it depends on whatever we're cutting we're gonna go with thick draft board right and then from there um you can cut it okay now the only other thing that we haven't talked about and i saved it for the last because not everybody is going to want to do it um if we go back to inventor and we go back to our part we haven't put 
the um, 2022. So if you would like to put 2022, all right, go in, make a sketch on your original part, right? And then right here we have text, okay? So you can click on the text, all right? And then nothing seems to happen. But basically what you have to then do is you click, right? And then it's going to start to add text. So we can say 2022, all right? Um, And when you hit OK, it's there, right? Uh, if you want to change this, double click on it and say, you know what, that is a little bit big for what I want. Um, select it. You have to select it. It does not work if you don't. Uh, and let's go ahead and change the size to 0.1 inch, so 100 thou. All right, and that makes it a little bit smaller. And then you're like, Mr. D, how to move it around? And so you can just kind of grab it and move it. Now, if you need it at an angle, which I kind of do, right? We're going to use the rotate command, right? And we're going to say, hey, rotate this around this point, right? And then you can say about like that, right? And then done. And there we go. When you go to move it, it will... It will uh, update, and then there you go. Okay, uh, that looks still looks a little big. Let's go eighty thousandths, point oh eight. All right, did not work because Mr. D did not select the items. All right, so don't forget to do that. Point oh eight, and then therefore it got smaller. Notice that it's sideways, but then as soon as you drag it, it will fix it. And then now I have the twenty twenty two. All right, finish the sketch. All right, uh, and then basically you can from this sketch you can say extrude, all right, and then I can I can select it, and then I'm going to say hey I want to cut all the way through, uh, and I can say hey through wall, hit OK, and then now that is in there, all right. And if you forget this, here's the cool thing, right? I can save this, I can go to my drawing, right, and my drawing automatically updates, right. So now all I have to do is save it, and then file export. PDF, right, and go to where I saved it before, downloads, happy trees, replace it, and pull it back into the Glowforge. All right, so hopefully this helps you uh, go through it. You can pause the video. You can run it at slower speeds. If I went too fast, I just didn't want the video to be super long. Thanks, guys.